Hi, in today's video, we're going to take a look at the Luminar 4 Pro Tools. Basically, this is a collection of six tools that concentrate mostly on contrast and color. And we're going to take a look at how they can help you enhance your photographs by bringing out those different elements of contrast and color. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Hi, my name is William Beam. I am a portrait photographer in Central Florida. I'm also the co-host of the photography podcast called I Like Your Picture. So I'd welcome you. If this is your first time here, this is part of a series that I'm working on for Luminar 4, how to use the various tools. I'll go ahead and link up, up above so you can see a card showing you a link to the playlist. And with that, if you like this, please uh, subscribe. We'll have more videos coming out and hopefully they'll help you achieve the results that you want to. With that in mind, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, I have a photograph I've chosen. I've already gone through the canvas tools and I did the uh, lens and geometry corrections and I cropped it into a 16 by nine to kind of get a uh, section. So we've got a little bit above and below, but why don't we go ahead and get started with the advanced contrast tool. And what you can see here is that it allows you to apply contrast in three sections, highlights, midtones, and shadows. So you've got a slider for the contrast in each of those areas, but also a balance. So let's go ahead and kind of play with these. There's no one setting you're going to find that's going to work for every photo. Every photo is going to be different, but I just kind of want to show you what the tools do, how they react, and then you can kind of learn how to play with them and adjust them to your own needs with your photos. So let's go ahead and start with the highlights and I'm going to bring this up quite a bit. Let me turn this off and back on. And you can see that's where we were before and that's where we are now. So just that little difference came from the highlights contrast, but we can also change the balance. If we bring the highlights balance over to the left, you can see how you get a lot of specularity here. It really brightens things up in the highlights. And if you want to pull that down, come over here to the right and it mutes that and it gives you less contrast if you're holding to the right. And now let's go ahead and take a look at the midtones contrast. I'm going to bring that to the middle. And again, we're going to do the same thing with the balance. And what you're looking for here is to see the difference in the area in your photograph where your highlights are being affected, where your midtones are being affected and the same thing with your shadows. So, we had a lot of specularity on her skin, her forearm, when we did the highlights. There's still some change when we do the midtones, but not quite as much as we saw before. So if we go ahead and bring this back over and change the balance there, you can see things are getting darker. You're not going to find that changing the highlights only affects one certain thing. Changing the midtones only affects another certain thing. If you look at her face when we make these changes, you can see that there's a combination of highlights and midtones here and her face overall is going to change depending on these sliders. And now let's go ahead and take a look at the shadows. I'm going to bring that up to the middle. And then we'll bring the balance down. And let's go ahead and bring the balance up. So you can see how the shadows are getting much darker over here now that we've brought it up. And we don't see quite the same change in her face as we're moving this around. There is some, but not quite as much. It's really this area in the background where we're finding most of those shadows. And if we zero this out, you'll see that's kind of where you expect to see shadows. It's much darker back there than it is in the foreground with, with her skin, her hair, and of course, this little uh, area of the pool that she's in. The best way to think about using this, I think, is in small moves. I mean, you might want to make a big drag just to see what's being affected, but the change you want to make, I think, is going to be really in small moves. So let's go ahead and I'm going to bring up the highlights a little bit. I'm going to bring up the shadows quite a lot. And then the mid cone, excuse me, the mid tones contrast, I'm going to bring right about there. And now I'm going to start moving things around. I want that shadow area to be a bit darker. So she stands out from it. I'm going to try bringing that down to see if I like the look of that. And then the highlights, I'm going to bring up just a bit. Let me turn this off. You can see this is where our starting place was. And then I'm going to go ahead and turn this on. That's where we went to. So it's just a little quick before and after. I think that making these changes helps you expose her face a little bit more because we've added some darkness in the background. You still get the idea that there's foliage behind her. And then this part over here, same tone as her skin, but I'm looking at the texture over here and I kind of want to bring that out without really bringing up so much the texture on her skin tone. So that's why I'm working with the highlights. I'm seeing a lot more of a highlight on her skin. And I'm kind of bringing that over to the right to lighten that up. The adjustable gradient 
quite honestly, it's just not something that I think of for a portrait. There might be a use for it, and we might exp experiment with that in a future video. Mostly, I think this is going to be for like a travel scene, a cityscape, a landscape, something where you've got a horizon line. And you can see that the orientation allows you to set this where it's going to be. And there's a settings for the top side and for the bottom side. So let's go ahead and set the orientation. And I'm going to leave this right here where it is. And we'll start to do some maneuvering. But I think what I'm probably going to end up doing is end up moving this center line kind of right here at the base of the mountains. Let's just go ahead and take a look. So the top side is going to be up here in the sky. I want to bring that exposure down. And on the bottom side, I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to bring the exposure up just a bit. And then I'm also going to bring the uh, bottom contrast up. And I'm going to go back to the top side. I'm going to bring the contrast down. I don't really want crunchy clouds. So now we have uh, some choices. You can work these either way you want to. Some people like to go all the way through the top and then all the way through the bottom. I don't. I look at top and bottom for each slider that we have under here because that way I kind of start making comparisons. I may go back and forth a few times. Maybe it takes me a little bit longer my way. I, I don't know. But I see what I'm looking for as a ratio between top and bottom better when I work it from you know one slider to the top and the bottom and then move down to the next that way. To me, I think I'm going faster, but really it's, it's up to personal taste. It doesn't make any difference to the final result, which order you do this. All right, so if we look at the shadows in the top, I don't see, let's see what we try, if we bring this over. I'm just kind of curious. And I don't really see much benefit from that. So, but on the bottom side, I do kind of want to open up the shadows a little bit. And I am going to pull the highlights down on the bottom. Then at the top, I think I'm going to pull the highlights down as well. All right, so here we go with, with warmth. And this is one of those things where I want to get some color contrast. So I'm going to cool it off in the sky because I kind of want a bit more of that blue sky. And I don't mind the mountain range over here being a little bit bluish because that's the kind of haze that I would see going off into a range like this. And, and it's also one of the reasons why I think I'm going to go ahead and move this up here. And now I'm going to go to the bottom and I really want to warm this up a little bit. And then as far as the vibrance, I'm going to go ahead and push that up a little bit. We'll see if the vibrance gives us much of a help or benefit on the top. That's where we are now. So if we go ahead and take a look at uh, before and after, this is where we started and this is where we ended up. So that is the adjustable gradient. Okay, so I've come back to this portrait for the dodge and burn section. I'm going to give you a quick look how you can use this with portraits. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom in to 200% and bring her face down. Dodge and burn is basically contrast in itself. One is going to lighten things. The other is going to darken things. So dodge for lighten, burn for darken. And that's what we want to do with her face. We want to do a little bit of uh, contouring here. The thing that you want to keep in mind when you're working with dodge and burn on a portrait is to use it in very, very small increments. I'm talking like below 5%, probably like 2 or 3%. But let me go ahead. We're going to click this button to say Start Painting. And you can see up here we have Lighten, Darken, and Erase. And if you look and you can see that our strength is set at 50%, I'm going to bring that down 3 or 4%. And it just kind of jumps back up with my cursor. So actually, I'm happy with 2%. This slider is going to be different for Darken or and lighten. So if I go ahead and click on darken, you see it's back up to 50%. So don't make the mistake of setting it once and then switching over to the other side and thinking that you're getting the same result. You have to set these sliders individually for both darken and uh, lighten. So I've got that one at 2%. That's good enough for me. I want to start off with darken and I'm using the bracket keys to kind of reduce the size of my brush. And here's what I want to do. I want to do a little contouring around the edge of her face. I want to do some on the cheekbones and on the size of her nose and down here. So let me go ahead and start down here. And it's very subtle. You probably can't even tell perceptibly that I just darkened that a little bit. But when we do a before and after, I think you'll notice the difference. So I'm going to go ahead and darken here on the edges of her nose. And what this does is it adds a little bit of contrast and it ends up kind of slimming a person's nose. And you're going to see the same thing as it's kind of adding shape to her her face overall. So let's just go ahead and get started. And what you see that I'm doing here is I'm following the natural contour lines. Let me go over to lighten. Now I want to do the same thing over here and 
I kind of want to brighten where the highlights already are. So right here, kind of on her upper cheek, above her eyes, I want to do a little bit right here underneath that spot where we darkened. And I think that's good right now. I might, if I were going to do a full-on retouch, this arm is very bright compared to her face. I would probably go ahead and darken that down. Same thing over here because it's going to be a distraction. But really what I want to do is take a look at the face. So when we get through here, I'm going to go ahead I'm going to select done. So there to there. It's very, very subtle, but you don't want it to be too heavy handed because then you're going to start seeing strokes. So take a look like right here on the edge of her cheek. That's before I'll turn it back on. That's after. And you can see where the highlights come up. That's before. And that's after. So we've kind of, given a little bit of brightness to this area of her face. We've darkened this down and it's just kind of helped her cheeks come out a little bit. If you wanted to, you could have done some darkening down on her jawline to make that a bit more prominent. And like I said, just work with this very small percentages, like two, three, maybe 4% at most. The one thing that I don't like is that you can't kind of do a before and after look while you're doing your dodging and burning, but you can always go back in and continue on. And you can always erase something if you think that, um, it was too much or just in the wrong place. If you want to get into color grading, the color enhancer is really one of the greatest tools we have. And also we're going to go into the next filters, photo filter and split toning. Basically these bottom three are wonderful tools for color grading and kind of changing the way things look. I am of the opinion that in most cases, color grading looks best when it's really very subtle, but Let's go ahead and do some experimenting here and we'll see what we can do. All right, let's start off with, uh, I'm gonna pull the brilliance down all the way. And you can see that that really desaturates a lot of the color, but it's not turning it quite into um, monochrome. So the brilliance, I'd say, if you do this with heavy handed moves, you've made her into an Oompa Loompa. So that's why I really believe in small moves. I'm going to bring this up maybe about 10%. 11% and probably bring in just a little bit of warmth. So just about 7%. Now this color contrast, you can see the amount slider here is set at zero and notice beneath it, the hue slider, you can't do anything with until you bring up the amount. So let's bring this up. And as you move this hue slider along, you can see what changes you're making depending upon the color contrast that you're making. So the contrast I really see here is between kind of the tone, skin tones on her, her hair, and uh, even this is kind of like more towards the warmer colors, and then I've got the greens in the background. What I want to do in this particular photo is I'm going to try and concentrate somewhat on the greens, and then I'm going to play with the amount slider to see where the color contrast goes. And as I've pulled this down, you see how the greens in the background are kind of getting really darker. I want to have a little bit of green in there, and that is just right about where I want to be. So you can tell there's lush foliage that tells part of the story of this photograph. But let's see what happens if we go ahead and turn this off. And then I'm going to go ahead and turn it back on. And then our colors are right back. So in my mind, this is a very simple color grade, but it's kind of brought the colors out. It's not just a saturation slider. We're also, I mean, we're covering a little bit of the brilliance and the warmth that's helping us, but also we're separating her from the foliage in the background. It, in my mind, this is a storytelling tool. All right, so the advanced settings, you've got uh, color balance. Again, we're looking at shadows, midtones, and highlights. So let's start off with the shadows. That's primarily going to affect us back here. And some of these colors I may not want to work with in every situation. So for example, since I've got greens and blacks back here, cyan and red, I don't think is going to really do too much for me. As I'm moving that back and forth, it's just kind of making everything look a bit more garish. It's really washing this out. So I'm going to double click on that. What I'm probably going to do is push this in the shadows just a little bit green and not too much. Uh, about 11 or 12 there. And I'm not seeing that I want to affect the yellows and blues in this particular one for the uh, shadows. But in the midtones and highlights, I might. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up the midtones just, just a smidge towards the yellow side. Let's say about 10. And I'm thinking that's probably a little bit too much for her. I want to pull the green out because her face is looking a bit green. And I probably want to go just a touch down from the reds. 
And all right, so I'm going to go ahead and start playing with this. If I pull this all the way over to the yellow side, you can see that makes a, a big dramatic re, you know, result primarily in this area of, in the foreground. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this way back. And that's why I said these are things that you kind of want to use in small moves. It's kind of like flying an airplane. You don't want to just grab the stick and lean it all the way over. It's not like the old fighter movie. So highlights, I want to pull some yellow out of her face. I'm going to go ahead and pull this down towards blue just a little bit. And I'm also looking here at the water in the pool. I might want to try and move that a little bit towards the cyan side. And let's see how we look. And I like that a little bit better because as we're doing this color enhancer, we're definitely changing everything, like I said, in the shadows, midtones, and highlights. I don't like eyes having that bit of a color on them. I know what the eyes are supposed to look like. I would probably mask those out and do something completely different. Okay, so there we've gotten our color grading. And if we can just go ahead and turn this off and on, you can see where we were before. And then we can go ahead and turn this on. And that's our after. We've kind of popped the color a bit. We've increased contrast in some places, reduced it in others. Like I said, there's more that we could do here. I, I definitely would probably uh, reduce the brightness of this forearm and over here as well too. But you get the idea. It's very simple moves, very small moves, but you get a, really a big difference and it just kind of makes your photo pop a bit more. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the photo filter. On this one, you can see we've got an amount slider, a hue and saturation slider. The hue is disabled. You can tell by that little gray color. Same thing with the saturation. Nothing happens until you get a little bit of an amount going. So I'm going to just bring this up. And you can see the hue is starting to take over the photo itself. You can change that and decide what color you want by gradually moving the hue over. And this is one of those things that would probably drag up more than I need so I can see the color that's being impacted, and then maybe I might pull the amount back, or if I'm really feeling bold, I'll go ahead and push it all the way up. This particular photo is one of those ones that I'm trying to decide, do I want to have kind of a yellow color because it's a warm scene, or do I want to push in the faded blue? So I'm going to pull the amount slider back a little bit. We've got a, a hue in here that's kind of in the yellows. The saturation's all the way up. I may pull this back, and push the amount up to see what change I get. And what I'm really looking at here is what's affecting his skin tone and what's affecting the wall. If I don't like the skin tone, I could possibly mask that out and maybe leave the rest of it there. I may find a color that I like on the wall. This is really just playing to work with taste and think about what kind of story you want to tell. What's the mood or emotion of this photograph? So as I pull the amount back down, I may pull the saturation down a little bit more. If I pull all the way down, we're right back where we started. So I think it, I'm looking kind of right here in this skin tone area and just bring the saturation up enough that I've got a bit, of a, a bit of a different story to tell. You may want to do something completely different. Let's say that we go ahead and bring this over. Let me bring the saturation back up so I can see how I'm working on this. You may want to go in and work with kind of a blue tone and then pull the saturation down, maybe pull the amount down, and you start looking at a much cooler kind of photograph. So it's really a, a matter of taste. To me, this is kind of, the environment is cool. His skin tone, I don't necessarily want to be that cool, but we can always go back in here and let's say in this case, we get a radial mask and we just put that on his face. And this is going to actually put the effect on his face. So I'm probably going to have to come up here to invert the mask. Let's take a look at the, the mask itself. Okay, so you can see I've got the mask there. And if I go ahead and click invert, then we've changed it a little bit. So let me go ahead and turn this off. And now I've got a different photograph completely. So I've preserved his skin tone there. 
not so much on his neck his forearm but that's not really where the center of attention is so let me turn this off that's our original image let me turn this back on and you can see we've done just a very subtle color grading so you can see the difference in his skin tone how things warm up if you're look, seeing a little bit of warping there that's from where i had done the uh, lens and geometry uh correction on this but that's just kind of a quick idea of a photo filter it is a very quick very simple color grade just trying to decide what color that you want to cast that you want to put over the photo, how much of it, and how much saturation you want. And again, we used a mask on here to try and selectively determine where it goes and where it doesn't. Okay, the last tool on the list is split toning. And this is where you can kind of get a bit of a color cast divided between the highlights and shadows. They don't have to be opposites. You can actually use similar colors in both the highlights and shadows but it's really, again, up to your taste. In this case, I see that we've got uh, some red on her blouse and shirt, and over here in the background, we've got a little bit of a mint green. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna actually try and pick the highlights and move this slider over for the hue. Actually, I've gotta bring the saturation up a bit before I can do that. So I'm gonna bring this over to where I get what I think may be kind of a mint green look. Let me, let me bring this way up. So it's a little bit of a green and yellow, and I'm gonna pull that saturation back down a little bit. Now I'm gonna do the same thing in the shadows, only in this case, I'm gonna be working with red, so let me pull the saturation up so I can see, and we'll get a hue that's kind of in the red area, and then I'll pull the saturation back down. So that's kind of my technique, is pull the saturation up enough so you can see the color that you're working with, and then pull it down to the amount that you want. So we've kind of brought up this red over here a little bit. Let's take a look at before and after. And you can see that we've just really changed the entire look of the photograph. You can tell in the glass over here in the background. And you've brought some tones in that make sense. It's also kind of given a little bit of a look to her face and the skin tones there. We've changed that a little bit. I'm not really a big fan of putting green on a person's skin, but that's a chance where you can go back and you can uh, choose a mask. We'll put that over there. And so now I still have her skin tone the way I want here, but I've got my, uh, I've got my color grading for the split toning. So if we can go ahead and look at there's before and there's after, and it just gives a bit more presence to your portrait or, or whatever kind of photograph that you're working on by doing that split toning. Again, this is one that I say small moves. You can go ahead and pull it all the way up to see what color you're working with. But as far as the final photograph, I'm a fan of just subtle changes that is almost imperceptible to the person who's watching. As I said, the Pro Tools or the professional tools in Luminar 4, these are really primarily for color grading and contrast. And you can make some dramatic differences to your portraits and photographs just by using the Pro Tools alone. I think there's a lot of potential here that we didn't really go over, but we'll do some videos in the future just kind of concentrating on some of these tools. For example, Dodge and Burn, I use that as an example of how you can contour someone's face but think about this, if you're looking at maybe a travel photo and you really want to brighten up one area and darken another, that gives you selective editing capabilities without having to worry about mask and using the light tool. I think working with dodge and burn in very small percentages and then building up to the level that you want gives you an element of control and it's still a very fast way to finish your photos. The next section of Luminar 4 that we're gonna look at are looks. These were formerly called presets. I'll show you some of the things that we have there and how you can create your own presets and use them to your advantage. If you got something useful out of this video, please go ahead and like it. And if you want to see more of this, go ahead, click the subscribe button, and then right next to it, click that little bell icon. That will let you know when I release a new video in this series and other videos to come. So once again, I am William Beam. Thank you so much. We'll see you in the next video.